Hello everybody, in this video I will answer your comments and questions about DNA tests and blood tests. For those who don't know me, I'm a co-founder of Macromo, a healthcare startup that aims to help people live a long and happy life by eliminating diseases. Because if you are sick, then you are spending your time managing your condition and you cannot do other activities um, that fulfill your life. And how we are doing it is that we are giving people ownership of their health and we are bringing next generation laboratory tools to the comfort of your home. And then you get personalized recommendations in our mobile app, which makes everything more hassle-free and enjoyable. And with that said, let's have a look on the first question. So this person says, very cool. It's annoying that patients can just be taught how to take their own blood and then to do a full test at home with the full amount of blood and then have a full blood testing machine for all markers at home. That's my dream. Honestly, I think it would be pretty cool uh, if we can make the machines for blood testing smaller and cheaper. However, I personally don't think this is the best approach because realistically you want to take your blood test, I don't know, every three, six months. Uh, and having a specific machine at home would be quite a hassle. Like I personally don't buy um, machines or devices that I won't be using at least once a week. But yeah, I, I think that taking your own blood might be scary at first, but I think it's a skill that anybody can learn. Our at-home blood tests take blood from, from a finger prick using automatic Lancet. And almost all of our users don't have a problem doing that. I'm not sure about taking it from a vein, that's, that's more risky. But automatic Lancets, there are other automatic collection devices on the market, like from your shoulder and so on. These are all great options. And whatever you do, just take blood tests regularly, like every year or every six months, so you know how is your body and organs doing. A second one, there is one person saying, is this Theranos Europe season two? <laughs> and then uh, there is another person saying, you clearly don't know much about blood testing. Rude and unnecessary comment on this woman's video sharing her journey in starting a business with a good value proposition. If you watch a more in-depth video on the blood test, she shows that you must collect much more blood than Theranos. It's just not as much as is done for a full blood test and clinic, as certain blood markers can be tested accurately without a standardized amount of blood. So a lot of people make these Theranos comments. Honestly, like um, it's, it's a joke in our company at this point. So I'm not surprised that somebody was genius enough to, to comment it under my video. Like key difference between Theranos and our company is that they were developing machines for analyzing samples. So they were doing a, a wet lab um, work and they were certifying these machines for medical use. What we are doing is a dry lab solution. So that means that we are using existing laboratory technology and we are outsourcing measuring of the biomarkers or the DNA of everything. And then we are just doing the bioinformatics analysis on top of it and we are presenting it to people in meaningful way. So I would see us more as a consumer facing health tech company than and a deep technology company that is doing data science than a company that is developing machines and like these things are totally totally different and then to explain a little bit more about the amount of blood you need um, most of the blood that uh, they take from your vein is not used and why we are taking more blood than we actually need for the analysis is because you want to use a different stabilization liquid for different biomarkers. So that, that's why you have different colors of gaps on the ampules. Like you, for example, cannot measure certain biomarkers using heparin, which is a green cap, or ETA, which is a lavender cap, like sometimes you need to use a combination of different stabilizing solutions uh, for different biomarkers. So that's number one. That's why many different ampules with many different colorful caps. 
And why we take more blood is because it's easier uh, when you're working in lab and the machines and robots are taking it. It's much more easier if, if there is space for error. If you want to do something like we did uh, with a small amount or with, uh, or you know, other companies like Triva did it the same way, then you need to highly optimize your laboratory processes. That brings additional complexity and cost. So, you know, given the fact that it's like fairly easy to take more blood, it's, it's just better to take more blood, but it's definitely possible to measure a specific set of biomarker with less amount of blood. As long as you follow the instructions, like if you give us only one of the two amples, then we are not able to basically measure anything. So always follow the instructions and uh, it will be fine. The next one is about whole genome sequencing. So what of whole genome sequencing test would you recommend if you are trying to find a cause of a known health issue? So far, they seem so vague. Does it ever list genes that are of significance? So at Macromo, we publish all of the genes that we are tracking on our website, insider.macromo.com. And there, for each disease we track, we have a section about genetics where you can learn more about specific genes or about polygenic risk scores we are tracking. We believe that it's important to be transparent about what kind of data we are using, what kind of studies we are using to analyze your genetic information. And so if you really want to read, there is like tons of articles. We have a specific article with the studies listed and with the genetics listed for everything we track. So it's very easy to find. Next one is, I'm thinking about doing one of these tests. You are the only one on YouTube that tried all of these tests that I was thinking to try. Which one, in your opinion, is the best? Nebula, Macromo or Dantelabs? So I, that's, that's funny. Like, of course I would recommend Macromo because I co-founded this company as a person who was exciting about this industry and who tried so many tests and was frustrated from them. BU, I would either choose Macromo or Dantelabs just because Nebula Genomics, it takes like so much time. Their reports are very vague. And um, also I have some like behind the scenes information from the industry that I don't want to share publicly, but I would just not go with Nebula. I would either select one of the two. For dental labs, uh, they are slightly cheaper than Macromo, but you need to purchase extra reports, which come in PDF. So if you are into, you know, reading static reports and wanting the service like slightly cheaper, and then dental labs is a great option. I believe they are based in Italy, but I'm not sure. So it's in EU, that means the data are safe. And then Macromo, of course, we are also based in EU, so your data is safe and under GDPR regulations. When it comes to Macromo, you will get your results in form of mobile application where you can work with them interactively. So if you prefer this kind of output, then Macromo is your choice. Also, we don't lock any reports. We give you all of the reports we have data for because it takes just a little bit of computational power on the cloud, honestly, to create these reports. So I don't see a point why anybody would charge extra money for it. But because we don't have any additional business model, like upselling you some random subscriptions or upselling you more reports like these other companies, our sequencing service is slightly more expensive. So either one of these two, if you decide to purchase Macromo, I will be very happy. Next question. Eva, what raw data files types are available for downloading and are they for free or they charge a fee for that? So I believe that uh, Nebula is not charging any fee for downloading of your data. I was able to download my data. There are three main file types, FASTQ, VCF, and BAM slash CRAM. So the FASTQ file is uh, basically the raw reading short reads from the sequencers, and then it needs to be converted to BAM or CRAM file for further processing. The BAM and CRAM files are used for genome analysis and uh, they basically store aligned short reads from the sequencers. 
And then we have VCF file, which is used for storing variants that differ from a reference genome. Reference genomes, like there is multiple different reference genomes. I think the one from Nebula was reference genome two, and now the latest one is reference genome three, I believe. Maybe they have different names. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a bioinformatician, but basically it, it depends like what version of, of reference genome you are using for that VCF file. What I would recommend is to just download all of the files if you want to work with them or if you want to store them. But probably the unaligned FASQ file will be the most useful one because then you can take it and you can align it however you want, like for a different reference genome or something like that, and use it for further analysis. Sometimes when we get some older data to Macromo because you need to get genomes like for, for our data sets for different analysis, we sometimes get them like aligned in a different way that it would be optimal for our analysis and we just realign them. So if you have that FASTQ file, you are safe. And with that said, there was a lot of questions, honestly, and I think I'm so like glad and excited that I get so many interesting and thought out questions and comments because I'm like very happy about the type of audience that is watching my video. So thank you so much guys for watching and we will see each other next week. Bye bye.